Although it only first appeared in 2001, a lot of you gamers out there in internet land may have forgotten about the Red Faction series. There are FPSs, best described as a cross between Half-Life and Total Recall. Minus fried scientists, three-breasted Martian women, businessmen with speech impediments, plastic cars, headcraps, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, obviously. So they're not really like either then. But it reminds me of it. Red Faction is also synonymous for its well-hyped geo-mod physics, a leap forward in gaming with completely destructible environments. Our world limitations of the hardware at the time made them look a bit, well, crap in all honesty. Considering they are a pre-Halo console FPS, Red Faction was an awesome series. Would you like a lollipop? No! But after a seven year hiatus, Red Faction is back. It's been given a nice new next gen lick of paint, a new genre suit to fit in, and an all new physics engine that does exactly what it says on the tin this time, with Red Faction Gorilla. Set 50 years after the events of the original Red Faction, Red Faction Gorilla sees you in the pantaloons of Alex Mason. A miner rebelling against the oppressive military might of the Earth Defense Force. Why are they so oppressive? Maybe because they're perturbed by the Earth Defense Force games always being destined for supermarket bargain bins. I don't know. But Alex feels defiant enough to take arms against this evil militaristic might, and that's all the plot device I need for a game. The most noticeable thing this time around is the change of genres. Gone are the Black Mesa inspired first person escapades of the originals, and in come the joys of a third person sandbox world. Considering it's developed by the same team who made the Saints Road series, Violition, it comes to no surprise. It's technically even set in the same universe. Keep an eye out for the old tool corporation references in both franchises. So rather than one linear path like the originals, you can now explore a huge expansive world where, like Saints Row, the object of the game is to gain territory from the man for your fellow comrades whilst also taking side missions to gain much needed morale in your side against the turf war. In fact, the only thing I see missing from its Saints Row heritage is the ability to pick up ladies of the night. So maybe there are Martian women with three breasts in the game then. And as I've said before, the one thing that made the original Red Faction so distinct were its destructible environments. And boy have they outdone themselves this time around. It's not just the mild abilities of destroying doors or making giant comedic bullet holes in the walls like the originals. Oh dearie me no. Nearly everything that can be seen can be destroyed. Alex starts off the game with only his mighty sledgehammer of justice, poning things as if he's Thor. But as the game progresses, Alex will have access to remote mines, rocket launchers, earthquake generators, sounds interesting, trucks, and even giant killer robots in order to flatten the terra firma. Destroying everything on your wake is so much fun in this game, there'll be times you'll be thinking, screw playing the game properly, and go around causing mindless violence as if you're on a May Day protest. And if smashing up stuff in your own gets tiresome, then pull in a couple of your online mates with its many multiplayer options. You don't only just get the normal deathmatch, team deathmatch, etc., but also burnout light modes where each you take turns to cause as much damage within allotted time. For a game that's originally designed to be Descent 4, Remember that, kiddies. Red Faction Gorilla is a fantastic action title that gives the franchise a long-needed kick up the Martian backside it needed, and is a great summer title. But in a bid to end this feature with the obvious smashing pun, I shall leave you with the words of the great Jim Bowen. Red Faction Gorilla is super smashing great. I'll get Nicola.